For as long as I can remember, they've been telling us to enjoy it while they're young, but our days are filled with chaos and stress and cooking and endless laundry piles. Where's the time to enjoy it? Yeah, that's what I always thought too. There's so much I have to do. When do I find time for peace and joy and happiness when I barely have time to sleep? Mama, it's time to make shift happen. You can be a happy mom. If I can, you can. Trust me. I've been a mess. I've been depressed. I've been overwhelmed. I've been to the bottom of the pits. And I've risen. I've grown. I've bloomed. And it all started when I realized I didn't have to anything. I get to. It is my privilege and my honor and my divine responsibility to be the queen of my home. It's not a burden. I'm not a burden. I'm in charge. I'm the ruler. I'm the chaos coordinator. I'm the calm in the storm. And so are you. Come with me. Let's rise, mamas. Adjust your crown. Accept your responsibility. Change the effing world together. It's all in the way we choose to see it. I'm so glad you're here, friend. You're listening to Meant to Bloom with Brittany Clarkson. Okay, Mama Scrooge, let's take a mental journey, shall we? The holidays are happening right now already. It's upon us. It's Thanksgiving. It's Christmas. It's all the things. I don't know if you go into the holidays with the bah humbug spirit or if it just creeps in as you undergo the heavy stress of carrying every event, gift, plan, and meal on your shoulders, or if it happens in the moment that your sanity just snaps at Christmas Eve with the in-laws, or if you manage to make it through the whole season in denial that you're actually miserable the whole time and nothing has lived up to your expectations. Let's unpack your beliefs and hopes about the holiday season today. I'm going to be cr- referencing Christmas a whole lot in this episode just because it it's the aesthetic right now. Um, but I want you to go ahead and include Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, New Year's, Festivus, Solstice, whatever it is that you are celebrating right now. If you have birthdays right now, you know, whatever it is going on, I want you to include all holidays, not just Christmas, the day, but I'm talking this whole season of winter. All right. And I want you to know that the point of this whole thing is to get you thinking and then to get you moving on some action steps that we'll lay out towards the end. Um, First up, we're going to be visited by a few ghosts. All right. We're going to be visited by the ghost of Christmas long past. All right. I want you to visualize going back to holidays as a child. What did it look like? What did it feel like? What was happening? What was important to you then? I want you to reflect on what were your favorite holiday memories? What kinds of traditions from then are so important to you to keep now? And are those traditions important because you enjoy them? Because they bring you this childlike joy? Or are they important simply because you've always done them? And I also want you to think maybe what kind of traumas did you hang on to from the holidays? How, how were, you know, holidays really stressful as a kid? What did you see growing up that just sucked? I want you to make sure that you're not bringing that in to your Christmases now. Okay. We don't have to relive those traumas. We don't have to recreate them. We can let them go. Are there things you're avoiding because they were traumatic as a child, but really as an adult, you would just love to go do that? Don't let your past control you. It's behind you for a reason. Okay, we're going to move on quickly from that. Um, You can pause, go back, take time if you need to really reflect and dig deep in that. All right, but next I want to hear up from the ghost of Christmas recent. Okay, so what have holidays looked like since you became a mom? Since you took the reins on controlling the whole season? Are you filling your plate with more than you can handle? Is this leading you to end up with a lot of leftovers but still feeling unfulfilled? Does your holiday to-do list leave you feeling empty and crushed? Or are you actually really enjoying your holidays right now? Are they filling you with what they're meant to fill you with? Or are they leaving you with an empty cup? 
Okay. Next up, we're moving on. The ghost of Christmas dreams. Okay. I don't want to look at the future Christmas of if you stay exactly the same. Future Christmas will all be the same as recent Christmas if you don't make a change. Okay. We don't need to see that. You're not going down this dark path where you're going to end up alone in a grave. That's not where we're going with this. You're not that Scrooge. Um, but I want you to think about the Christmas of your dreams. What does that look like? What does your perfect holiday season look like? All right. Imagine your best winter ever. And I mean fall transitioning into winter, all of it right now, starting now. What does this best season look like for you? It's not about that single day. What are you doing in your perfect holiday season? Who are you surrounded by? If you get this visual, like what does your home look like? What activities are you taking part in? Are you filling your schedule with all the things? Or are you sitting at home, sipping cocoa, watching movies by the fire? What actually lights you up when you think about holidays and Christmas of the future? What do you want this year to look like? Because you can make this year at the holiday of your dreams. It's not too late. You can do this anytime. I mean, even if you're sitting here listening to this on Christmas Eve and you've already like drained yourself on the holiday, you know, all of the things, then it's fine. You can still stop, pause, shift, enjoy yourself. And in the last couple of years, I've really learned to lean into the love languages and reflect on how each member of my family receives and feels love. For some, it is gifts and they get more, you know, they get a lot more thought into their gifts, maybe some more money into their gifts, more, you know, the gifts are weighted more important to those that I know receive love through gifts. But for others, it's quality time. And so for those members of the family, they're going to get invited to do more of the planning with me, help me out on gift wrapping, help me out in the kitchen with the cooking. The people who want more time with me, I'm going to pour more time into them and include them in more of the pre-holiday planning and those kinds of events. And for some, it's physical touch. And I'm going to make sure that they're getting intentional extra snuggles and hugs throughout this whole season. All right? I'm going to make sure that everybody feels seen and loved in the ways that they feel love. Some people, they don't care about getting a gift on Christmas. I don't want them to be left feeling empty because I spent all my time trying to find them a gift when all they wanted was my time. I'm going to spend my time on them instead. And then they're going to get a gift card or something. Because, you know, I don't want anyone to be like, why didn't I get a gift? Because some people don't quite understand pouring in the love rather than the gift. But when you weight things differently, instead of just blanketing that everybody needs a great gift or they, you know, are going to feel left out, you're going to run yourself thin. You're going to spend more money than you feel comfortable spending, you know, or you're going to feel bad because you didn't get to spend as much money as you wanted on people because, you know, budgeting and finances and whatever. Like if you weight it differently, budget it differently, plan it differently, it doesn't have to be a major stress. When you're buying gifts for people you know are excited to receive a gift, it gets so much easier. And when you know that you don't have to stress about gifts for certain people because you realize they don't care about the gift, that takes so much pressure off you to just hit up the gift card kiosk for those people. Um, or do something handmade. Those are always great, you know, like the little cocoa jars. All right, there's, I mean, think outside the box. Do whatever feels really good and really amazing for you. But then there's also people who feel love through words of affirmation or acts of service. So for words of affirmation, you want to be building them up. You know, think of ways that you can pour words and encouragement into them. And for others, it's act of service. How can you step out and help them in some way preparing for the holidays? Or, you know, if you know that you're going to be a guest at someone's house who receives love through acts of service, think how you can be helping them prepare for the party. Maybe you can show up early. Um, you know, maybe you can bring something that helps take the load off of them. But the point is to look for opportunities to love one another 
instead of keeping score of how much money is being spent on how many gifts for every single person. All right, let's take a moment and think about this one question. What would happen if you did Thanksgiving and Christmas and anything else completely different this year? Like what if you ditched the gifts? What if the entire meal was store-bought? What if you ordered Chinese takeout instead of cooking? What if you skipped the tree? What if you only decorated with branches and things that you found in your own backyard? What if you traded all your current party plans and threw one big potluck party for anyone who wanted to see your family this year? What if you took your whole family and you ran away to a mountain retreat or a tropical getaway instead of doing the whole holiday thing? What if you let people come over without doing your manic three-day cleaning spree first? What if you let your home looked lived in when your relatives came to visit? What if you just let Christmas happen during real life? What if you did anything differently than you've ever done it before? What if you let go of traditions that don't excite you? Does it feel good to let that go? Does it feel exciting to let that go? Or does it feel just completely wrong? Like, does it feel like something you'd like to let go of, but it feels like a crime somehow? You know, like not doing the tree. What would it be like if you skipped on the tree? Do you enjoy decorating the tree? Maybe you have little ones who constantly pull everything off the tree. What if you just didn't do one? What if you just traded it for a small two-foot tree with no decorations? or only decorations that your kids made this year and you just let them take it over and you don't do the big, elaborate, beautiful, color-coordinated tree that you've done in the past. How does it feel to change that up? Does it feel good? Does it feel freedom? Or does it feel not good? If you're really struggling to let go of some tradition that you don't actually enjoy doing and that no one in your house really cares about, you might want to question if it's become an idol. I had a question that a few years ago and the tree had definitely become an idol because I needed it to look a certain way. And finally I was like, well, what if we just didn't even do one? What if, what if I didn't, we ended up doing one, but it was definitely way more low key. I let the kids decorate the whole thing. It was a plastic four foot tree where in the past we've always we live in the pacific northwest so we've always done like live trees because they're in the backyard um and like decorated them so beautifully and i was like well what if we we have a lot going on what if we just did the small plastic tree and then i don't have to water it we don't have to worry about putting it too close to the fire for drying out and you know i'll just let the kids put up some decorations and what if i just didn't care about it and not caring about it was one of the best things i did because i realized it had become such an idol And it was such a big part of Christmas for me. And it wasn't the important part of Christmas for me. I mean, it's different when decorating the tree lights you up and excites you. But when it doesn't, maybe it's time to stop caring about it. Pour your time and energy into the things you actually care about. All right, mama, you're the one in charge of the energy here. You're the one who sets the tone. If you want a chill, relaxed Christmas, then it's up to you to create that and to leave plenty of white space. If you want lavish parties and extravagant extravagant gifts, then that's up to you too. You get to plan that. You get to coordinate that. You get to make that happen. And if you want adventures, mom, it's up to you to go seek them. You don't have to do things the way you've always done them. You get to decide what your holiday season looks like, and it doesn't have to be any more stressful than any other day in your regular life. And you know what? In fact, it shouldn't. It should be less stressful because this time of year is for mindfulness and gratitude that lead us in to peace, love, and joy. And if you're not feeling those things, you're not failing. You're just doing more than you need to do. You're doing more of the wrong things and not enough of the right things for you. And everybody's Christmas, everybody's ideal, perfect dream Christmas and holiday looks different. I'm not telling you to do yours just like mine. I'm telling you to do yours the way that actually fulfills you and your family. What's right for you guys. And you know what? It might change every year. 
Some years you might need to just get away and go on a family trip. And some years you might need to go to every single tree lighting and hayride and event. You might need to go hit up every single thing that you can. Fill up that bucket list. Do the things. Sometimes maybe it is about buying big gifts. Sometimes maybe it is about just sitting at home around the fire with Coco, watching a different Christmas movie every single night. Maybe sometimes it's about you getting away for a girl's only Christmas party. Maybe you need a night out with other moms. Do what you need to do. Live the life that you want to be living, the life you're meant to be living. Stop forcing yourself into a box. Make sure that nothing is a have to for you. It's always got to be a want to. You don't have to do anything. And if it's not something you want, then don't. I, it sucks that you need permission. It sucks that our society has set things up and put this, you know, mindset on us that we have to do things a certain way or, you know, it means something about you. You have to make sure your kids are taken care of, sure. But I think that's something you want to do, isn't it? You want to take care of your kids. You want to provide a great life for them. But a great life is not provided by you stressing yourself out and burning yourself out and just being on the verge of ending it all. That's not providing the life your kids need. Your kids need you to be present, to watch them, to love them, to pour into them. Your kids need you to be you, exactly the way you've been created to be. Not to be who you think you're supposed to be. Okay, mama. I have put together an unstressed holiday guide printable for you. That's going to be, and it, it's got more than what you need to have the holiday that you really want. Okay. So I've given you permission to not do everything. And you absolutely need that permission before you go and get this guide. Because this guide gives space for doing everything. And I need you to know that you don't need to do everything, right? Because this guide has party planning sheets. It's got holiday bucket list. It's got your gift planner and tracker. There's coloring pages so that you can chill out or distract the kids while you're getting something done. It's got journal work and mindset shift. And it's got permission to just let it be easy. There's printable calendars to organize all the places that you want to be. And see where you're leaving yourself some blank space. Because that is a must. Okay, and there's self-care tips and ideas in there too. The holidays are for you to experience peace, love, and joy too. You get to have fun this year. You get to enjoy the holidays. It's not about you stressing yourself out. It's not about you losing your effing mind. It's about peace. And that is for you too. And love. And that is for you too. And joy. And that's for you too. Okay, mama? No one in your house is going to experience peace, love, and joy if you don't. You set the tone. You set the energy. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. It's not about you coordinating the perfect family gatherings. Those don't exist. This is about you making space for peace, love, and joy. Okay, my friend? So snag this in my Etsy shop and use code PODCAST, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, for an extra discount. And that extra discount applies to everything in the shop right now. So happiest of holiday season to you, my friend. I really wish you all the peace, love, and joy there is. Thank you so much for joining me today for this episode of Meant to Bloom. It really does mean the world to me. But are you ready to take this a step farther? Check out the description below of this episode and grab your mindset makeover. It's totally free, my gift to you. Then hop on Instagram and let me know what you thought of this episode. Tag me at Britt Clarkson. That's B-R-I-T-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N. If any part of this resonated with you, please let me know by tagging me or leave a review and share on social media so other mamas can find this too. If it helped you, it's going to help someone else. You're part of a movement now. Let's go. Thank you.